Hello everybody and welcome back into the Pillow Fort. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today where I'm just going to go stream of conscious some of the new backup commanders for the Modern Horizons 3 commander decks were revealed and I kind of asked myself the question do some of these look better than the face commanders that are coming in the boxes? So I thought I don't know maybe I'll take a look at both of them side by side and I'll document my journey through that so bear with me while i ramble a little bit and also if there's any seamless cuts that hide anything that i want to uh avoid showing so i'll be looking at the secondary commanders and the face commanders from least good to most good i think that explains it and why i'm going to start with the least good is because this has one of the biggest disparities, in my opinion. It's the Eldrazi deck between the face commander and the secondary commander. So what the box here says is start small Eldrazi smash. Uh, that's really all we know about the contents and what the main deck's goal is going to be. So because of that, we're going to take a look at both the face commander and the secondary commander. Um, I am going to butcher these names and I apologize. Uh, Ulake, U, U, Ulalek? Ulalek is the face commander. Uh, as we see, it has those hybrid manas with the colorless and then each color. But basically it says whenever you cast an Eldrazi spell, you may pay uh, soul ring mana. And if you do copy all spells you control, then copy all other activated and triggered abilities you control. You may choose new targets for the copies. Let's look at the secondary commander, which is Aslask. Really, Aslan? Uh, this is Aslan if he was turned into an Eldrazi. Uh, it's three mana and it's generic, so it's easier to cast. Um, when it or another colorless creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. So experience counters are back. And then Wooberg creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of experience counters you have. Scions and spawns you control gain indestructible and annihilator one until end of turn. So like I was saying before, I'm basing these off of what would be the best to helm this new deck. And also if it's going to be played in other decks, you know, we've seen some secondary commanders way overshadow the face commanders when it comes to building brand new decks around them. And this I just feel is just such a disparity because of Azalask. I thought it was really crazy when I first read it until I reread it and saw it mainly went off of Scions and Spawns. And I love those and we're going to be getting a bit more of them in Modern Horizons 3. I just don't see this uh, Aslan beating the Ulalalek. Let's move on. I think I can pronounce these other ones a little bit better. Next, we have the energy deck, which is Jeskai. That's not easy for me to say. Um, it's called Creative Energy, and it says energy counters, powerful payoffs. That's all we really know about it. So in this case, that's this is why I think the backup commander... Uh, for this deck might not be the greatest in overpowering the face commander because the face commander Satya uh, has menace haste for four mana three five whenever it attacks create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of another target non-token creature you control you get energy energy uh, at the beginning of the next end step sacrifice that token unless you pay an amount of energy equal to its mana value um, so it's pretty cool you get to create that token no matter what it's about keeping it is the thing and i think this is probably be a good payoff for the whole commander deck because of like we just saw it has a whole energy sub theme so this is probably going to be a way to grow some of that Whereas Kaeth, Famed Mechanist, is also 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Fabricate 1, and Fabricate, I have it right here. When this creature enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, or create a 1-1 one, one colorless servo creature token. Um, and then it says, other non-token creatures you control have Fabricate 1, and then you can pay 2 generic and tap it, choose 1, Populate, or Proliferate. So how i was talking about the other one before i do think that this backup commander is going to have a lot of decks made around it um being able to cast creatures and then either get those counters or get another token is pretty strong you get two for one but then at the same time having her ability be a tap 
populate or proliferate. It basically goes off of whichever direction you wanna take with the deck, which I think is pretty uh, useful. But when it comes to this pre-con, I have a feeling like you're gonna want a lot of energy producers and energy payoffs and having one in the command zone. I'm gonna give it over to Satya. Once again, I'm definitely not saying that right. Up next, I hope you're sitting down for this. We have a Simic lands deck. All right, let's jump into it. Modern Horizons, always pushing the limits. Uh, tricky terrain is ramp lands grow value, but I will say the face commander has, well, many faces, but also is quite interesting. This is Omo, Queen of Vesuva, two and a hybrid Simic for a shapeshifter noble, one five. Uh, whenever Omo, Queen of Asuva, enters the battlefield or attacks, put an everything counter on each of up to one target land and or one target creature. Each land with an everything counter on it is all land types, and each creature with an everything counter is all creature types, which that's pretty cool. I don't fully know what to do with that quite yet, other than some obvious, you know, pump spells that are really specific, but aren't that specific when it comes to making your creatures everything or lands. There, there's some stuff to do with it, and I'm sure the deck is going to be full of that. The backup commander is Jyota, uh, Jyoti, Iodi, Moag Ancient. I'll call it Moag Ancient from now on. Uh, it's four mana, for a 2-4 elemental, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one green forest dryad land creature token for each time you cast your commander from the command zone this game. And then at the beginning of each combat, land creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is this creature's power. Um, this is one where we got to take a look at the deck and I have a feeling like there is a lot of crossover here. Um, once they start revealing things, I feel like there will be a lot of uh, creature lands because Omo putting everything counters on lands and then if they become creatures, they're also every creature type and every land type. So there should be some crossover um, I don't know if we want Moag Ancient in the command zone and being kind of a payoff to be an overrun almost in a way without trample. Um, or we want Omo in the command zone being able to spread around those counters. I'm not sure. Either way, I know that people love land decks and Moag Ancient is another one of those uh, really cool commanders that will give people... Uh, you know, Simic value engines ways to close out the game, which is turn your lands that you've just ramped, you know, 15 onto the uh, battlefield by turn 10, turn 10, 20 by turn 10 and uh, turn them all into creatures and attack with them. Um, so I feel like this will be built quite a lot. The Moag Ancient Omo, I feel like we'll have a lot more corner cases outside of people building the uh, uh, pre-con or upgrading the pre-con. Um, so I think these will be kind of neck and neck as far as what one will be best for putting in the command zone when you buy the uh, pre-con. I'm not sure. We will really have to see the deck list, but I do think both of them are, are pretty neat. Well said, Tyler. Finally, we're talking about the pre-con called Graveyard Overdrive. This is Fill Your Graveyard, Avenge the Dead. It's quite poetic, that uh, that tagline. Um, the face commander, we have Disa the Restless. Five mana Jund for a five, six human scout. Whenever a Lurgoyf permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, put it onto the battlefield. I lost my way for half a second through there because... That's kind of a tongue twister in and of itself. Uh, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a Tarmogoyf token. That's crazy, but let's we'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, the backup commander is Karam the Undertaker. You're gonna go one on one with the Undertaker. Uh, four mana Jund for a zero five human warrior. Uh, Karam 
the Undertaker gets plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in all graveyards. Uh, whenever this creature attacks, each player mills a card, and then during each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a spell from among cards in your graveyard that were put there from libraries this turn. Um, I find this guy really really cool i just built uh the new master transcendent card from the uh, fallout precons and it's a very similar thing so disa does feel a little bit lore goyth specific in my opinion but who knows maybe the precon is just chock full of them whereas uh karam the undertaker feels very broad in terms of graveyard synergies and uh I have a feeling that this deck might not be all Lorgoifs in general. Just looking at the, the little breakdown of talking about the graveyard and bringing things back and everything. I feel like um, unless most of the creatures are Lorgoifs, um, you probably could fit Karam the Undertaker in the uh, commander slot when you buy this precon. Once again, I don't know what the deck list is yet. Uh, when it comes to outside of the precon, I do have a feeling like Karam has a bit broader of a scope when you want to build a new deck around it, unless you want to build a Lorgoif deck um, where Disa is obviously the commander for that. If you're looking to build a mill deck or uh, a recursion deck or whatever, Karan the Undertaker is kind of crazy and it's making me rethink my Jun deck. Sorry, Corvold. You're a little too too basic and everybody's afraid of you anyway. So maybe maybe I, I, I'll switch this around. Now I'm going to throw it to you. Do you think any of the secondary commanders will outshine the face commanders for these decks? Let me know in the comments and let me know uh, if I did an all right job bumbling myself through this video. And you can just say you just did all right. That Even just that in the comments, I would appreciate it. Anyway, I will see you guys next time in the fort.